get this, there's this new AI model and it's uh, already causing a stir. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really shaking things up. It's, it's performing like crazy, like just as well as like the big names, you know. Yeah, I know, right? It's it's hitting like state of the art performance on all these different like reasoning tests. Wow. And get this, it's the first one that wasn't made by like that one big company everyone knows. Oh, really? Yeah, to actually match their top model. I I'm, I'm super excited to dig into this. Yeah. We're talking Kimi K1.5, right? Yeah, Kimi K1.5. What makes no. it so groundbreaking? Well, Kimi K1.5 is special because uh it's what they're calling a multimodal thinking model. Okay. So it's like imagine an AI that can like take in and understand information from all kinds of sources like text, code, pictures, you name it. That's cool. And then it can like reason across all those different data types. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how we humans can understand and connect ideas from different places. You yeah, know? yeah, I getcha. It's pretty neat. So it sounds like Kimi K1.5 can do some pretty complex reasoning, huh? Yeah, definitely. What about the way it solves problems? I heard it uses something called long coat and short coat. What are those exactly? Ah, uh, that's a great question. Coat stands for chain of thought. Okay. So imagine you're working on a puzzle, really. You might start by thinking about it in a really long and detailed way, trying to consider like every possible angle and solution that mm. would be like long coat. Right. But as you keep working on the puzzle, you start to see patterns and like little shortcuts. So your thinking gets more concise and efficient. Oh, we see. And that short coat. So Kimi K1.5 can use both of these approaches. Yeah, exactly. And what's even more impressive is that it can handle these massive amounts of information, like context links, up to 128,000 tokens. Wow. That's, that's a lot. It's huge. How does it process all that information so efficiently? I read something about long to short techniques. Oh, yeah. Can you explain what those are and why they're so important? Okay, so picture this. You're on a super long and winding road, and it takes forever to get where you're going, right? Yep. Long to short is like finding a shortcut. Okay. A more direct route that gets you to the same place, but much faster. I like that. That's basically what Kimi K1.5 is doing. Hmm. It's taking what it learns from that long chain reasoning and squishing it down into a more efficient short chain process. Oh, wow. This means it can solve problems quicker and doesn't need as much computational power. That's that's really clever. Yeah, it's pretty slick. So how does all of this translate to real world performance? I understand Kimi K1.5 is getting some pretty amazing results in those benchmark tests, right? Oh yeah, it's crushing it. In tasks like math, coding, even visual reasoning, it's blowing other leading models out of the water. Really? Sometimes by as much as like 550%. 550%, that's insane. <sighs> what can you tell us about the team behind this incredible AI? Well, Kimi K1.5 was developed by a team over at Kimi.ai. Okay. And they're led by this guy, Jilin Yang. Jilin Yang. Didn't he do some groundbreaking work on Transformer XL? You got it. He has a PhD from Carnegie Mellon University and was the first author on Transformer XL. And on top of that, he's worked with some of the biggest names in AI, like Jan LeCun and Joshua Bengio. Oh, wow. And, you know, the core team at Kimi.ai. They've got the inventors of things like Ropey, Group Normalization, ShuffleNet, and Relation Network. Wow. All huge advancements in the field. It's a really impressive group. They sound like they really know their stuff. So what's next for Kimi.ai and Kimi K1.5? Well, they've already made a huge splash in the AI chatbot world. Mm -hmm. In just their first year, they've racked up something like 36 million monthly active users. That's a lot of users. Yeah, it's a ton. That puts them in the top five AI chatbot platforms globally. Wow. Right up there with the big guys like ChatGPT, Google Gemini, Claude, and Microsoft Copilot. That's incredible growth. Yeah. It seems like Kimi.ai is a real force to be reckoned with in the AI landscape. Yeah, definitely. What does all this mean for the future of AI development, though? That's a big question. Yeah. You know what's really interesting? Okay. Kimi k 1.5 success shows that big innovation isn't just happening at those few big companies anymore. Uh, it's becoming way more decentralized, more accessible. So we can see even more competition. Yeah, totally. And faster advancements, maybe even more of those unexpected breakthroughs. It's definitely an exciting time to be following the world of AI. It really is. Things are moving so fast. So much is happening. Yeah. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a closer look at the technical details behind Kimi k 1.5's success. Yeah, let's do that. The Kimi team put out a technical report outlining their approach. Right. What are some of the key takeaways from that? One of the coolest things is how simple their training methodology is. Simple. Yeah. 
they were able to get this amazing performance without relying on those really complex techniques like Monte Carlo tree search or value functions. Oh, wow. You know, those are commonly used by other models. Right. Instead, they focused on scaling up reinforcement learning in a really efficient way and seamlessly integrating different types of data. Yeah. It seems like that approach really paid off. That's fascinating. So they achieved superior performance with a simpler approach. Exactly. And their report really emphasizes that this is the first multimodal model to reach this level of performance. That's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Their long too short innovation is like setting a whole new standard for efficiency. Okay. And their training methodology is proving to be super effective. It seems like Kimi.ai is really shaking things up, paving the way for a whole new era of AI development. Yeah, they're definitely challenging the status quo. And it makes you wonder, what other crazy innovations are just around the corner? Right. What other boundaries are just waiting to be broken? That's a question that keeps me up at night. Me too. The potential of AI seems limitless. It really does. And, you know, as we keep exploring this incredible field, I think it's important to remember that we're all in this together. That's a great point. We need to approach AI development with a sense of responsibility and collaboration. Absolutely. We need to make sure that these advancements actually benefit all of humanity. So what's next? Where do right. we go from here? Let's shift gears and explore some of the real-world applications of Kimi K1.5's capabilities. Sounds good to me. Let's see how this groundbreaking AI is actually making a difference in different fields. So with Kimi K1.5 being able to process all these different types of information, yeah. like text, code, images, mm -hmm. it opens up so many possibilities. Yeah, I can imagine. It's like having an AI that actually understands the world in a way we've never seen before. That's it. Think about how we humans solve problems. We don't just rely on one type of information. We ah. use our experiences, our knowledge, what we see and hear. Mm. Kimi K1.5 is starting to think that way too, like a more holistic way of thinking. That's incredible. Mm. Do you have any like concrete examples of how this could be used in the real world? Sure. Let's take the medical field, for example. Okay. Imagine an AI that could analyze medical images like x-rays or MRIs and be super accurate. That would change everything. For diagnosis and treatment, I mean. Absolutely, yeah. and it goes further than just looking at images. Kimi K1.5 could take that visual data and combine it with patient records, research papers, wow. even genetic information. That's amazing. It sounds like Kimi K1.5 could completely change healthcare. It definitely has the potential to, and it's not just healthcare. Think about architecture and engineering. Okay. Kimi K1.5 could help design buildings that are more sustainable and efficient, you know, by analyzing blueprints, energy consumption data, hmm. even weather patterns. Yeah, the possibilities are pretty much endless. Right. It could even help us tackle climate change, like by optimizing energy use and designing eco-friendly infrastructure. It sounds like Kimi K1.5 could make education more engaging and effective for everyone. That's the idea. And it could even impact creative fields like art and design. Really? Yeah. Imagine an AI that not only understands what an image looks like, but also like the emotional impact, the symbolism, the message behind it. That's mind blowing. Yeah. It could help artists come up with new ideas, push their creativity, even create totally new forms of art. It's super exciting to think about how Kimi K1.5 could transform different industries and parts of our lives. It is. But just like with any powerful tech, we have to be cautious, too. That's true. As AI gets more advanced, we need to think about the ethical side of things, too. Yeah, for sure. We need to make sure AI is developed and used responsibly with fairness, transparency, and accountability. That's a crucial point. We need to make sure AI is used for good and that its benefits are shared by everyone. I completely agree. And that's where our listeners come in. What do you mean? Well, like we've been talking about, Kimi k 1.5 success shows that things are changing in the AI world. Uh, it's not just a few big companies making all the advancements anymore. It's becoming more open and accessible. So you're saying individuals can have a real impact on shaping the future of AI. Absolutely. Stay informed about what's happening in AI. Have these kinds of conversations. Hmm. Share your thoughts and concerns. Okay. The more we talk about these things, the more we can influence where AI is heading. That's a good point. We're not just watching from the sidelines. We can actually help shape the future we want. Exactly. Support organizations that are doing good work in AI. Advocate for ethical guidelines and regulations. And encourage people to think critically about how AI is affecting society. It's like a call to action for everyone. We need to be informed, engaged, and proactive in making sure AI is used for good. Exactly. And that brings us to the heart of it all. Okay. If an AI like Kimi K1.5 
can already do so much across all these different areas, what does that mean for solving problems in the future? What possibilities does it open up? That's a deep question. It's almost like we're on the edge of something new. Yeah. Where the lines between human and machine capabilities are starting to blur. That's it. And it's not just about doing math faster or automating things. It's about boosting human intelligence, making us more creative, and taking on some of the biggest challenges facing the world. It is kind of exciting and a little scary at the same time, mm. you know, thinking about how AI could change the world. Yeah, I know what you mean. Kimi K1.5 is a perfect example of how far we've come. But it also makes you think about what's next? What other big breakthroughs are coming and who's going to make them happen? Those are the questions that keep me up at night. Can we even predict what's next when things are changing so fast? Well, predicting the future is tough. Yeah. But we can look at what's happening now and kind of guess where things might go. Sure. For example, there's a lot of research right now on AI that can really understand and even create human language. Like way right. better than before, even more fluent and nuanced. So we could be talking to AI in a way that feels totally natural. Exactly. Imagine talking to an AI and you can't even tell it's not a person. Wow. Or AI that can write novels, screenplays, even compose music, just as good as anything humans can do. That's wild. It's kind of creepy, too. Yeah. Where do you think this tech is headed in the next few years? I think we'll see AI becoming a part of everyday life even more than now. From healthcare and education to smart cities and self-driving cars, AI could really change a lot of industries and help us solve some big problems. It sounds like it. But who's going to be leading the way? Will it be the big tech companies or will we see some new players come in? Probably both. The big companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, they have a ton of resources and know-how, but there are also all these AI startups popping up doing really innovative stuff. So it'll be a mix of the big guys and the newcomers, all competing to be the leaders in AI. Exactly. And we can't forget about all the research happening at universities. Right. They're making huge breakthroughs, too, and that's really important to make sure AI is developed ethically and responsibly. So it's like a team effort with everyone working together. Yeah, pretty much academia, industry, even people like our listeners who are learning about AI and talking about it. So the future of AI isn't set in stone. We're all helping to shape it. Exactly. It all depends on the choices we make, where we invest our money, and the conversations we have. That's a powerful thought. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners before we wrap up this deep dive into Kimi K1.5 and the future of AI? I would say stay curious and be open to the possibilities, but also think critically. Don't just accept everything you hear. Stay informed, ask questions, and talk to people about the ethics of AI. The future is happening right now, and we all have a part in making sure it's a good one. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It's been amazing to explore the incredible things Kimi K1.5 can do and the huge potential of AI. I hope this episode has left you feeling inspired and maybe even a little bit challenged to think about what the future holds. And who knows, maybe some of you listening will be the ones shaping that future. 